Okay, so now I want to talk about uh, chapter two of uh, Adam Smith. Um, the chapter two begins with the question, what's the principle that gives rise to the division of labor? Uh, the short answer is this, self-interest. The principle that gives rise to the division of labor is self-interest. So uh, we want to explore what that means and uh, how we get there. Uh, he starts off the question, uh, is the division of labor natural? Uh, you know, so is this kind of, the work from nature. And he says, no, but it is grounded in something that is natural, um, which is a natural propensity to truck, barter, and exchange. So, you know, I asked myself, what's, um, what does truck mean in 1776? Uh, because I uh, imagine it doesn't mean Peterbilt, Kenworth, Mac, and so forth. Uh, but uh, so I went and looked it up in the um, uh, Oxford English Dictionary, which is the place to go to find this kind of thing, and it, it literally it says there, uh, truck in 1776 means to barter and exchange. So I'm like, wow, this was very little help. Um, I guess it would probably mean to like carry back and forth. It doesn't matter so much. It was just an interesting uh, uh, aside. Uh, so the division of labor is grounded in the power to truck, barter, and exchange, which is, he says itself, grounded in something that is very natural, and that is language. Okay, so language is the, is the natural source from which buck, truck, barter, and exchange becomes uh, like a, a second nature, and then maybe the division of labor, what, a third? Or maybe it's a second nature, I don't know. Uh, but it's, so it's tied to something natural, but it is a, a tweak of it. So that's a, 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 the answer there. And what is language for? Uh, the answer is the same as the answer for what is the principle of the division of labor? Self-interest. And again, I don't know if this is an assumption uh, that is right or wrong on uh, Smith's part. It seems to me that given some of the other things that we've read, uh, to think about self-interest as being something over and against the community would be problematic, but maybe I think this is what is he's he's pointing to, because what is the language for is self interest. He says, you know, dogs sometimes they you know you, oh if you got a dog you know this the little fawning eyes you know uh, I peed on the carpet but you know well, fawning eye and you're like oh here's a treat anyway right because we're suckers for that right or wrong good or bad go out the window for cuteness right and he says well humans do the same sort of thing. And maybe we do, but we also use language to do something similar, which is this. I'm going to convince you that the things that I want, you want too. So since everything's working in self-interest, how do I get what I want? I make it seem like you want that thing too. I mean, it's like, you know, I, my, my father was in sales his whole life and, and you know, was had a career in doing this, you know, and was, I'm sure, a good man. So I don't mean to say that this is the nature of all salespeople. But you come across the people that are the, like, worst kind, I suppose, what I mean. This is what I, I guess he's saying is our base way of being. What do I got to do to convince you that what I want, you want too? I don't care if you want it. I'm not here for you. I'm here for me. I need you to get what I want. So how do I get what I want? Uh, this is this is also Ayn Rand. If anyone's ever read any Ayn Rand, this is this is a description of Ayn Rand. She she thinks that Adam Smith is like, uh, you know, walked on water or something like that. So, you know, this idea that my self interest will just sort of leak out into the world and be beneficial to others, and if it doesn't, I don't really care because I'm not here for others. Right? I'm here for me. And if you're not getting along well, well then, go be different and get along well. Uh, I'm not here for you. If you got something that I need, I will be happy to try to get work out a deal where I get what I need from you. If it works out good for you, great. But if not, I don't care because I'm not here for you. There's no, there's no friendship. There is Everything is like this business deal where I'm in it for me. So, but the problem here is this, and, and so 
I can't have anything without the cooperation of, this is where he says, countless others. So previously he said uh, several thousand. Now he says countless others, right? And I have said everybody. So it, my stance is this, something like this evidently, and maybe he's indicating this as a problem. I am utterly dependent on everybody and am out to get only for myself. So the sort of self, the dependence and the non-self-sufficiency is similar to what we read in Aristotle, but the commitment to the community is completely different. Remember, Aristotle said there's a responsibility for those who have to help up. This is, this is an act of virtue, right? If you and I are equal, well, if I'm doing all right, well, you just should go be equal to me and lift yourself up. You know, I owe you nothing. I'm not here for you. So this radical selfishness would turn all of my fellow community into things for getting what I want. Yeah, I love this this phrase because it's like it's. I guess I'm a I'm a regular old uh, Irishman. So when he says these things, I'm just like hooting and hooting. It is not from the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our. It is not from the benevolence, excuse me, of the butcher, the brewer, and the baker that we expect our meal. We do not address their humanity. We address their self interest. Why is it good for you to give me uh, what I want? because it's good for you to do so. Is it really? I don't care, but I'm not gonna tell you that. So that's the first thing. Um, all right, there's just a couple of things to, en to end up uh, on here with chapter two. I wanna highlight um, so some of them uh, are kind of straightforward uh, and just worthy of indication. Very important though is this. Smith says towards the end of chapter two, that the inequality that is found among men is likely to be caused by the division of labor than the result than uh, the division of labor being caused by the inequality among men. You know, it would be great if there were people that were actually like kind of dolt like. Excuse my words here. I'm talking off the cuff. Um, dolt like people who for whom straightening a pin would just be a great challenge every day. So they would never become like just numbed to nothingness by it. So it would be great if nature gave us human beings for whom straightening a pin would be a great job. But they don't. Nature doesn't give us that. Nature gives us human beings that are equal. It's straightening a pin that makes them dolts. That's the kind of thing. And now if that's the case, then that means my universal plenty and my general opulence is riding on the backs of people whose mental dam faculties are damaged and who become dolts and who become unequal by providing for me. This is one of, this is one of Smith's uh, uh, ambivalences. Boy, oh boy, look at what happens here. There is a marketplace full of stuff, but at what cost? Is it a worthwhile cost? He doesn't even really answer, but just sort of, it's a, remember, it's a scientific thing. It's just sort of, look at what these things are. Um, oh, one other thing. So, also, in the, there is something to this. Is there's got to be, if I had to take care of everything that I needed, first of all, there'd be no way I wouldn't have light, electricity, you know, running water. I, I mean, I don't even know how to do this stuff. Where would I get it? If I had to take care of everything that I wanted to and needed to provide for myself, I would have very little. Uh, also, what if I was like good at something, but had to, like if I was good at, uh, his example is arrow making, but I also had to hunt and farm and, and fix my roof and get water and do everything else and do everything else and do everything else. And in the last hour that I have that I'm not exhausted, I, I can make an arrow or two well. You know, I won't, I will never be able to develop that skill if I have to do everything else in my life and I will never be able to develop that skill into a, a, in a way that would be useful for everybody if I have to do everything else in my life, right? So the division of labor allows for the development of individual talents. And again, I think he's, he's different or he's lumping together 
a division of labor and specialization, or maybe even just something like individual genius, which is not even something that can be learned, but like a natural gift. Okay, so let's, we're in a position now that we can sort of stand back and assess uh, Adam Smith um, in, in a couple of different ways. Let's, let's understand what he sees here when he's describing this increase in, in production, right? Remember, it's a descriptive venture. He is not championing it. And if he is championing anything, he is also cautioning, okay? So his ambivalence, there's a pros and cons thing here. Um, it, I, honestly, there is one huge pro that runs through this whole thing. And that is this, uh, it's either general, is it general plenty and universal opulence or universal plenty and general opulence? Either way, it's, it's, it is a, a marketplace of, of goods made by way of pro this increased production that is available to everybody. No one will go wanting. I mean, this is oh, cool. All right. No one will go wanting. This is his idea. And so that... I, you know, I guess there might be problems with this later on down the line. If everyone has their own everything, the world chokes because the environment can't provide everything for everyone. Um, so there's, that's an issue that one would have to deal with. However, um, being left out of the marketplace because you you just can't participate is something else. Now you can because your wealth, apparently, is connected to your productive power. So if you produce, you can be wealthy and you can get what you want. Okay? That's like that's the pro. No one will go wanting. Also in the pro column is this uh, power to develop individual skills. Um, there may be others. These are, these are the ones that are, I mean, general, general opulence and universal plenty is the reason. It is the pro here. Um, Cons. So uh, the cons are we become machine-like, we damage mental faculties. There's this this involvement with people's lives that he compares to the African king, absolute master of lives and liberties of ten thousand naked savages. Is that an overstatement, or am I really involved in the lives like that, or what? Well, this is something to com contemplate. Um, uh, maybe you tell me what you think he means by that that the inequality is caused by our work, that, that, that us having all of this means that some people will become damaged. And, and then lastly, I guess the, there may be more again, this is just some of the ones I'm going to indicate, that there's a self-centered non-self-sufficiency. Aristotle's non-self-sufficiency is not self-centered. If it is, it's not... Uh, it is self-centered in a way that includes virtue and others, right? So part of my being a good member of the community is helping others with the stuff I have. So that means that I have to attend to others because they have helped me get the stuff that I have. Uh, there is no such obligation in what Smith is saying here. In fact, other people can be reduced to things for me, things for me, okay? So, uh what what do we get and what's left behind? This is a this is a matter to be considered. There's also the two two issues that um, that that I think are just that are assumptions. That I, I don't think that um, they're the two issues that are assumptions. Period. Uh, one about which he's wrong. One about which I I guess I hope he's wrong. I'm I, uh, and maybe that's clouding my judgment. Anyway, uh, the first assumption is that. My product, productive power is linked to my wealth. And th that, is, that is incorrect. And Marx is right. The ownership of the means of production here is the thing that Smith has overlooked. Um, I do not take home my share of the productive, my productive power. I don't get wealthier the more I make. And in fact, there may be an inversion. Marx talked talk about it in terms of an inversion. But it's not... I, my... My wealth is not bound, connected to my productive power, um, nor is poverty connected to productive power. 
my own productive power so that I, my reasons for being poor are not my laziness and my reasons for, to get rich will not be by producing more. So I think, so these are two problems here with this equating productive power. This is something that comes from the Protestant work ethic. Uh, not, I mean, this isn't the name called names or anything. This is what it's been called by uh, Max Weber. It looks like Max Weber, uh, Max Weber, a sociologist wrote a, an essay called The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, um, where, the, you know, for the Protestants, the work is, is going to work is something that you do, like, for God. I, this, is a, this is how you become holy, right? This is a way of showing faith, committing yourself to work. And what happens here is that the, the sort of the theological underpinning of that starts to wane, but the moral valuation stays. So those who don't work are lazy, evil, no good, low down, whatever. And I mean, because back in the day in the Protestant understanding, if you didn't, if you weren't working, you were like of the devil. Idle hands are the devil's playthings. And the unemployment line is full of lazy people. These these judgments go hand in hand. So there's a we are haunted by by these ideas, even ourselves, even if we don't have all of these commitments, you know, our self our self esteem, our judgment of others, uh, is bound up with our work. And, and and the assumption that poverty is deserved because productivity comes from, I mean, wealth comes from pro productive effort. So poverty is your own fault is a very dangerous idea. And this comes from, from Smith or this kind of thinking. Okay. So that's, that's Adam Smith. That's it. Chat, chat later.